So in this video, I'm going to be painting up this Savage Orc on his boar by Avatars of War. And this is an absolutely awesome sculpt. So let's go through how I painted him up. So here he is, Savage Orc on boar. Boom. Now, this sculpt is really, really cool. Like I said, it's by a company called Avatars of War. And they do a load of like old hammer style sculpts. And they look fantastic. So if you're into that older Warhammer style of things, it's definitely worthwhile checking out. He's on this bore here and he's got these different interchangeable parts. So when it comes off the printer, it comes on the bore and the body are all printed as like one part. And then you can change around like the axe, the way it's facing, for example. He's got this arm here and you can either have him with a shield or you can have him with this like boar tusk that's kind of on the end of his arm there. It's a really fun looking sculpt and obviously reminiscent of the old hammer style of things. So I printed him off in this suddenly white resin, came off really nicely and then I got him primed with a Xenophil Prime. Now I wasn't really sure of what my paint scheme was going to be for this so I used some contrast paints and speed paints as I normally do but I knew that I wanted to bring out some of those details as I got later on with some more highlighting and just blocking in a few more colours. So to start off with I hit it with a Gut Ripper Flesh Contrast Paint and this was pretty much all over obviously the flesh areas for the orc and I really like the way this turns out. I recently did it on another video for my goblins that I've been using and it's a nice like old goblin green type of paint. It comes out in that sort of color there. I used to use Plague Bearer's Flesh with a wash over the top of it but that Plague Bearer's Flesh is more of like a an off yellow whereas this Gut Ripper Flesh just it looks a lot more orc and goblins-y so it's definitely worthwhile trying out. Once that was done, I hit it with hardened leather speed paint for the bore and any of the ropes or like wooden parts on it. And pretty much everything that's meant to be brown is that same brown right across the whole model. And I always try to keep it simple so I don't have to reach for different paints and mix things up. It just makes it easier. And you can change things later on once you get to that highlighting stage. You just kind of adjust the colors how much you like. Next up was the cloak and the axe and I used army painter speed paint for this. It was a Gravelord grey, sloshed it all over there and it gives a really nice dark stone effect on things like the axe and then this nice kind of furry effect like a wolf cloak or something like that on his back. For all the bone parts, again, I went with army painter speed paint. It was pallid bone and I put all like the tusks, all the skulls that he's got hanging off him, these kind of like big mammoth tusk things on his back as well bits of his blade and everything, that's all that bone stuff there. I really like the way Pallid Bone turns out for this. It's a slightly darker bone, but again, when you come back in for some highlights and stuff like that, it's a nice base to work with. Moving across, he had these really cool little features. So he's got this like turtle shell on his arm. Um, he's got these feathers kind of come off the bore as well. And I figured I wanted them to be really bright. So I grabbed the latest set of contrast paints because those things are like really bright, vivid colors grabbed a few of those and sloshed them on then. And the colors that I use for this are Baal Red, Croxigore Scales, Magma Drop Flame, Striking Scorpion Green, and Bad Moon Yellow. So I just picked out the different feathers, painted them in those colors, and they came out obviously incredibly vivid and bright like you'd expect from the new contrast paints. Once that was done, I decided I would move on to the actual highlighting of the orc flesh, just to bring out some of the like, tops of his muscles and everything else. And for the highlighting stage, I used Citadel War Boss Green, mixed it in with a little bit of white on my wet palette as well. And again, if you're using your wet palette, it's really nice to kind of get it to this like glaze consistency, use the back of your thumb just to see, is it too thick? Is it too thin? And then start sloshing it on there. I'm not good, I suppose, at glazing or highlighting. I'm still practicing it. But it's relatively easy to get a pretty decent effect, even with little experience like I've got, as long as you don't go too heavy with the paint. If you take it straight out of the container, it's probably gonna to be too much and it's just gonna really mess up what you've done already. So make sure you go slowly, put a little bit of layer on there and just build it up to a, a highlight that you like. Gradually add a little bit more white to it every so often, and then you can bring those green highlights up all the way to where you wanna leave them. Once that was done, it was onto the oil wash stage. And for this, I just mixed some white spirit with burnt sienna. Mixed it to a nice thick consistency because I knew that I wanted this brown all over it and then I sloshed it all over the orc. And I was really happy with the way it turned out contrasting against like the greens and it really helped me to mess around with the bore underneath it. The great thing about an oil wash is you can slosh it on there as thickly as you like and then you can come back in later on with a makeup sponge and some white spirit and rub it off all the high areas and it gives you a really nice blend between that brown through to the top layers that you want to get. Anywhere that's got too much pooling, you can rub it all off and you can leave it everywhere else. I absolutely love oil washes. They're really fun to work with. Just make sure you're in a ventilated area when you mix them up. 
So for highlighting the boar, I used this Mornfang Brown. And again, I did the same as I did with the Orc Flesh, popped it onto my wet palette, got some white as well, slowly mixed the two together, and I just brought up the different highlights. So it eventually started to look quite fleshy on the top parts, and then you had the darker browns underneath it. It just gave a really nice, I guess, more three-dimensional look because there were more highlights and everything else on there. After highlighting the boar, I went back in just with some pure white, popped it all over the Orc in different places. So like on the top of the turtle shell, I managed to bring some of those highlights up. Things like the feathers as well. And again, because it was a nice glaze-like consistency, you can just bring it up slowly. It mixes with the layers underneath it. One good thing, and I suppose a bad thing about army paint speed paints is they do reactivate, but for this purpose, it's great because the white then mixes in with the layer beneath it and it just brings up a nice highlight of that color. Once I got all the highlights to where I wanted, I went back in with some flash kits yellow, did things like the claws, the eyes and the teeth, and I just got them to the, I guess, the consistency that I wanted. And then I decided to do something slightly different with his face. So where I had a lot of those, I guess, brighter highlights on like his lips and around like his cheeks and stuff, I went back in and I made up a bit of a glaze out of Army Painter Speed Paint Hive Dweller Purple, and I mixed it in with Speed Paint Medium. So to get it to the consistency where I wanted, it was about one part of the purple versus three parts of the Speed Paint Medium. And then I glazed it onto his face just to give it a more purple like hue to it instead. Once that was done, I put a few tufts on his base, rimmed the base with black and left him there. And I've got to say, I am really happy with the way he's turned out. One of my commitments has been to get better at highlighting and doing things like glazing and everything else. And these sort of models with this big like muscular skin area and everything, gives you a real nice little challenge there where you can just mix it up, play around with the skins, try to get some highlights in the right places. Like I said, I am by no means an expert for this, but doing this, and I did some Dwarves by Highlands Miniatures recently as well, is really helping to push my painting skills and just figure out where that light should be coming from and where those highlights should sit on something like this Orc. I had a lot of fun painting this one up. I hope you like the way it's turned out as well. And it's definitely worth our checking out Avatars of War. They're not a sponsor or anything like that. It's one that I subscribe to. They make some fantastic minis. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What would you do differently? Have you painted up this model yourself? And have you got any tips for me as well or for your fellow painters that you can throw down there too? Like I said, I'm going to be practicing as much as I can to get better at painting. And I'm really happy with the way this has turned out. So thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed, and if you have, head on over to my Discord channel where you can chat with other hobbyists as well. Really want to support the channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, helps this video to get out to more people, tells YouTube that people actually enjoy it, and fingers crossed you did. And if you really, really want to support me, head on over to my Patreon channel, just helps me to keep the lights on and buy more miniatures to paint up. In the meantime, stay safe, I'll see you soon. Bye.